Welcome to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and today I'm bringing you my review of Animorphs 7. It's not been that long since January, shh, shh, shh. Welcome to The Stranger, we're seven books into this story and there ain't no stopping us now. We're back at another Rachel book as the cycle continues. I don't know if the cycle breaks at any point, we will discover that together. Let's talk about the cover. It's a bear! This is me when my wife finds me in the kitchen having searched for snacks. After the standard opening, which after seven videos I no longer feel obliged to share with you, we start our story at one of my favourite book settings, the circus. Except this is clearly a 90s circus because they use animals. Okay, I know some circuses still use live animals, but it's much less common now, certainly in the UK. I don't know if it's different where you are. If so, shame on where you are. Turns out the only reason that these animal-loving teens, Cassie and Rachel, are at this circus is because Rachel's dad brought her. Remember Rachel's parents are divorced, so this is that 1990s, 2000s trope of having one useless parent in the divorce? But it turns out that Rachel, who, let's remember, can turn into an elephant, is understandably quite pissed that the man training the elephants is using a cattle prod on them. So it's revenge time. Yep, you guessed it. Rachel becomes a secret fifth elephant, so she surprises Joseph, the elephant trainer slash torturer, and speaks directly into his mind. See, Joseph, I am from the International Elephant Police. We have had some complaints about you. Well, she doesn't actually hurt Joseph. I think she does enough damage that he's not going to want to go near an elephant enclosure, let alone poke one for a while. When they get back together, Jake is a little bit annoyed, but also completely understands that it's happened now and there's now what he can do about it. Anyway, I looked at Cassie. She gave me a wink. We kind of didn't tell Jake that she had been there too. Cassie and Jake like each other. She didn't want him to be mad at her. Lying is the best foundation for relationships. Lying to avoid making your partner angry? Even better. Everyone's walking to meet their favourite hidden andalite axe in order to reveal that Marco has found a way into the Yik pool. Yeah, because the last time you guys went after a Yik pool, everything went A-OK. -okay. In fact, the last time you guys did everything, it went A-OK. -okay. Well, I was hoping to amaze and entertain you all with the whole story of our brilliant detective work, but the short answer is in a dressing room at the Gap in the mall. That's the entrance. People go in looking like they're going to try on clothes, and they never come out. Do they also buy jeans? In through the gap. Out through the multiplex, Marco laughed. Are these yeks on top of popular American culture or what? As we've established, it's unclear if the yeks are actually into human culture or not. I'm still stuck on the notion of bird watching yeks from book three. <laughs> and because Axe is here after just seven books, I finally understand what Candrona is. The Candrona is a miniature version of the yek's home sun. It emits Candrona rays, which concentrate in the yek's pools. It's what nourishes the yiks. That's why the yiks must swim in their natural state in the yik pool every three days. They need Candrona rays. But the Candrona may be many miles away from the yik pool, Axe explained. The Candrona rays may be beamed to the pool from almost anywhere. So although I'm in favour of attacking the yik pool, we should not do it expecting to find the Candrona there. So the plan at the moment is to go to the yik pool, use the yik pool to find out where the Candrona is, whack it a little, deal a crushing blow to the yiks. But how, oh how, to achieve that? Before we do that, we're going to Rachel's house and her father's coming for dinner. It's never good news when this happens, and sure enough, her news anchor dad has been offered a job out of state, and he wants Rachel to go with him so that she, a gymnast, can train under top coach Belkinoff. Did anyone watch Make It or Break It? Because all I can think of is Sasha Belov. Yes, I know it would be hard on you and your mum and your sisters, but we could make it work. I mean, this job pays a lot of money. You could fly back here anytime you wanted, every week if you wanted. Climate change, Rachel climate change. So Rachel does what any of us would do if we had the power to morph, and as soon as she's done talking to her parents, she goes into bird morph and she flies away. So Rachel flies off in her owl form to go and speak to wise old Tobias, the hawk boy. She doesn't actually tell him what's going on, but they chat a bit about the yik pool party they've got planned, and there's a bit of a sad conversation about what they might do on the off chance they're still alive in a few years. Flying back over the zoo, Rachel decides she needs some real firepower. It's time to go and get some bear DNA. They meet at the mall, having met separately, trying to do their, oh, fancy seeing you here impression to throw the yikes off their scent. They go to the dressing room and they change into roaches. In a moment of foreplanning I wouldn't have expected from this group, Jake morphs last, having collected everyone's clothes and put them in a locker. It's pretty good from the team who thought, yeah, let's just turn into her cat. So does anyone remember back in book four where I asked whether Andalite minutes are different from human minutes? 28 of your minutes have passed since Cassie and Rachel entered morph. You know, Axe, they're your minutes now too, Marco said, just to make conversation. I mean, we are all here together on good old earth where we only have one type of minute. Which answers no questions, but there you go. So they have to find the room with the Candrona in it, and they decide to follow the smell of french fries, which is apparently where the human will probably be. We appear to have hit a snag in this plan already. Down here there's a taxon, which is an alien creature if you don't forget, and it kind of wants to eat the roaches. In a very weird moment they all start to demorph, even though they're not trying to. They're ready to run when suddenly Tobias he's back in boy form. What's happening and why has time stopped? It's an 
Elemist. He kind of speaks in like a thought slash brain boom. He was humanoid. Two arms, two legs, a head where a human head would be. His skin was glowing blue, as if he were a light bulb that had been painted over so that light still shone from him. He seemed like an old man, but with a force of energy that was definitely not frail. His hair was long and white. His ears were swept up into points. His eyes were black holes that seemed to be full of stars. So that doesn't answer what an Elemist is. They are all powerful, Axe said simply. They can cross a million light years in a single instant. They can make entire worlds disappear. Here. They can stop time itself. Still doesn't explain what an Elemist is. So apparently the Elemists want to stop the Yerks taking over Earth because Earth is pretty. That's their entire reasoning. The Elemist takes them on this tour of all the pretty things on Earth, and he ends his tour by telling them all that the way things are going, all the humans are going to end up either extinct or controllers. Basically, they're going to lose. The Elemist suggests moving the humans to a new planet. It'll be kind of like a human nature reserve. Also, these five children need to vote on it right now, or they're going to be food for attacks on. They start to vote, which apparently is actually how they make most of their decisions, which I'm not mad at. Tobias and Rachel say no. Cassie says yes. Axe says he probably shouldn't be voting on this since he's not a human. Marco says no. Cassie says if everyone else is voting no, then she'll vote no too. Jake reached out and took her hand. Mr. Elmist, I guess you have your answer. Instantly we were back in our roach bodies. If you live, I will ask once more. I will ask once more. That's how he speaks in my head. And we're back in normal time, and they're back inside the taxon, and Tobias is a hawk again. But basically they demorph inside the taxon and pop it from the inside. Quickly they try to morph into their powerful morphs, but they're trapped. Then, I realised I was no longer afraid. A deep confidence had welled up inside of me. Utter confidence. Utter fearlessness. I realised I was no longer standing erect. I was on all fours. When I looked down, I expected to see my two hands splayed on the dirt. Instead, I saw massive paws, coarse, dark brown fur, black claws, each like the point of a pickaxe. I had become the bear. It was his confidence I felt. It was his total lack of fear. Boom, smack, pow, and they managed to escape. Rachel gets kind of told off by her mum for coming home, falling asleep immediately without having dinner, and not speaking to them, which... You know, I can respect. I think this is the first example of attentive parenting we've had in seven books. Rachel skips school for some introspection. I think it's pretty clear at this point that these kids are processing some quite intense trauma, just in case you'd missed that as a theme. Conflict betwixt our animorphs. The guys are a bit upset that Rachel keeps going off and, you know, touching bears and being dangerous all by herself. Rachel, who up until this point has been the strongest of the group, has a bit of a breakdown, which I think makes everyone realise they're not as strong as they think they are. This was always insane. Right from the start, Marco said. A handful of kids fighting an alien invasion. Look what's happening. Tobias is trapped in a morph. Rachel's starting to use morphing to get away from her problems. The other night I woke up in bed and I didn't know what I was. I didn't know if I had hands or fins or claws or talons. Maybe you and Cassie are immune, Jake, but I doubt it. So they're all despair and gloom and the Elemist comes back. Because, you know, it's always fine for people to turn up when you're most vulnerable. You know, that's that's trustworthy. Like a good friend and not like a manipulative force at all. The Elemist sends them into a vision of the future where everything's basically become a yik pool. The Taxons have a hive in the mall. There's kind of like a yik lake everywhere. It's all a mess. So they almost get caught, but they pretend that Axe is Visa 3, who apparently in the future is now Visa 1, so go you. And they scare off a controller who might have been onto them. But uh oh, actual Visa 3 slash 1 has arrived, and who should be with him but a spunky short haired blonde? It's Rachel. <laughs> and future Jake is with her. They're all controllers. And apparently in the future they've cooked Tobias. It's all quite hard to wrap your head around. Time travel always is. It's fine, don't think too hard about it. But Visa, whatever number we're going for, has pissed Rachel off. And so she's going for him. In bear mode. Just as she gets ready to thwack him, they're sent back to the real world. So they say yes to the Elemist, but nothing happened. We get a moment on the butterfly effect. We get a moment wondering what the Elemist actually wanted. I've read it and I still don't know. But Cassie's worked something out. They're not going to run. They're not going to send them all selves off onto the human reserve or anything. They're going to be butterflies. Not literally, we've done too many bugs, they're going to be more metaphorical butterflies. He's in a trap, Cassie said. The Elemist is trapped. He wants to save Earth, but he can't interfere directly. Supposedly, he, all he's allowed to do is offer to save a small number of us, but he knows that won't save Earth. It will save a few humans, yes, but when he showed us visions of Earth, he wasn't talking just about humans. He said Earth was a work of art. He wants to find a way to save it. Jake snapped his fingers. The EGS tower. That's what's under that dome on the top floors. The Candrona. That's what the Elemist wanted us to see. Just the way he let us see the drop shaft we used to escape. He wasn't interfering. Technically, the choice is still ours. Again, I'm giving you tiny snippets of it, but it doesn't make much more sense in the book. This seems to have at least temporarily given Rachel her mojo back, so she's ready to kick some yik butt. The guard jerked in his seat. He stood up and moved cautiously closer. Then he drew his gun. Hey, get out of here, the guard said. Hi, Marco said in thought speak. I just came from a masquerade party and I was looking for Visa 3. The guard's eyes went wide. And light, he hissed. 
Oh, so you are a controller. Good. That makes it so much simpler. With that, Marco punched straight through the thick glass of the door. I love these books. Fight scene, fight scene, fight scene. I've just written in my notes, Animorph reset button. It was a steel pedestal, maybe three feet high, eight feet long, and atop that pedestal was a machine the size of a small car. It was shaped like a cylinder, tapered to dull points on both ends. It gleamed brightly like new chrome, as if it had just been polished, and it made a slight low humming noise. As I approached, I felt my hair stand on end from the static electricity. It was warm in the room, very warm. It smelled like lightning. Have you smelled lightning? Rachel morphs elephant and she tips the thing out of the window. Everything changes the future. I groaned. Somehow I knew we'd hear from that guy again. A replacement Candrona will be here in three of your weeks. It was already on its way. So what have they achieved? I'm pretty sure they're never going to achieve anything. I mean, you managed to destroy a Candrona and there's already another one coming. We get to the end and Rachel helps her dad pack even though she's gonna be staying put for now. I'm pretty sure this is the weirdest book so far, and that's saying a lot, because all of these books have been quite weird. But now we have weird time travel creatures that speak in booming voices that take you through time, but also kind of wanna help you, but probably aren't that trustworthy. If you enjoyed this video, if you wanna see more, if you wanna support this series, you can subscribe. That is the best way of doing that. You can comment below with your thoughts on the series so far. What are you enjoying? Do you hate Marco as much as I do? He was remarkably tolerable in this book. Let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next one. I'll see you in a couple of months for Animorphs 8. <laughs>